Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here are your hosts, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, the SpongeBob SquarePants to my Patrick Starfish, my best bud, a one Mr. Brian E. Roach. What's going on, my bestie? Uh, I'll, you know, it's, it's, it's January, and the Patriots are out of the playoffs, so life is good, and that's all that there is to it. Man, I'll tell you, you beat me to it. You beat me to it. I should have went with it. I, I went with the cutesy intro with you know the SpongeBob stuff. Eh, so be it. I I know, <laughs> but I, look, I, you know there is there is there is sadness in Mudville, you know, because the Steelers, of course, aren't in the playoffs, and I'm in in the Philadelphia market, and they were, but they're not anymore either. So I can be content about that. But you know, my my life is full and complete and joyous because the Patriots aren't there. Yeah. So you know today's episode. Cutting to the chase is talking about quarterbacks, and the Steelers have many <laughs> on their on their roster. A plethora, one of my favorite words. You know what? Uh, let's, let's get ready. Let's go right to, into this. Tom Brady nah. is not going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Good lord! Like, how many different ways can we? Uh, I know some betting site did whatever, and KDKA jumped on this, as did uh, some other people. I want to say, um, I think Chase Williams, one of the local newscasts or sports guys, too. I think he's with WPXI or whatever. I think that's the NBC affiliate uh, out of Pittsburgh. And the CBS affiliate, KDKA. And their, their social media, their website, they jump all over this. Because you know what? Like us, they don't have things to talk about. Unlike us, we have a brain. <laughs> it can at least be realistic. And we don't have to necessarily... Uh, coerce you folks into listening to us or uh, attract things by uh, clickbait. You know, it's the old bait and switch thing. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about this thing, and it just it's so ridiculous too for me. Like this time of year just drives me crazy because I see people share things from different uh, what do you want to say Steelers pages or websites and stuff, and it's almost always a news article. My Doctor Evil air quotes. That's just somebody else's tweet. All it is is talking about what somebody tweeted in, I don't know, it's 280 characters or something now, but usually uh, they found that people aren't even using the maximum um, amount. So we'll say 150 characters, somebody says blah, 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 and all of a sudden it becomes big news and it gets shared by all these sites that, you know, some of them pay a penny to people for sharing it per click and whatever other garbage that's out there. And it just makes my eyes roll because, you know what, Brian, we always try to have at least some type of shred of integrity, even if we're biased. We've never claimed to not be homers, okay? Uh, we've never claimed to not be uh, maybe overly positive at times. Uh, that kind of, you know, it, it steers you clear of like stuff like Zach Banner posting about somebody who was one of these uh, bloggers that are out there that what? They, they really, they ragged on him. It was like, well, you got these guys coming to camp, these offensive linemen, and then there's Zach Banner. And he's like, I had that pinned up in my locker all season as motivation. I'm like, ouch, how would you like to be that guy? You're probably probably never going to meet Zach Banner or anybody else he's friends with in that locker room. And if you do, they're not going to think too highly of you. They're going to think probably worse than you thought of Zach Banner going into the season. So, you know, we try to keep these things even keel. And when I see like the local sports, whatever, you know, putting out like Tom Brady and they put it out in such a veiled way that makes people who have like, you know, they're, they're the, they're the fans we were talking about to stop being stupid last week. And we're going to touch on many of the same things we talked about, but more focus on the quarterback position here because number one, it's, they don't have the salary cap to sign Tom Brady, even if they wanted to, that's assuming Tom Brady ever hits free agency, doesn't retire, doesn't return to the new England Patriots. There's so many different things and everybody's all of a sudden it's, uh, you know, for as much as everybody has been on the Patriots jock, it was almost as nauseating. I don't know if you felt the same way, Brian. I mean, I got a little bit of a chuckle about it because it probably drove Patriots fans crazy, which is where ah, their tears are salty and taste delicious. But at the same time, talking about their impending doom and gloom and how this could all be over and Brady's last, uh, this could be Brady's last pass attempt and everything like that. 
I'm just, I'm rolling my eyes over here. I'm like, okay, this is a little bit too much overreaction. And the game wasn't even over yet. <laughs> that was the biggest thing. It was a one point game. And it's just like, shut up. You just, if you could be any more annoying, this is very over the top annoying. And then, of course, everybody's speculating on Tom Brady, but odds on favorite to land with the Cleveland Browns, who have a number one draft pick as a quarterback. I don't understand any of it. It's complete nonsense. Brady's not coming to Pittsburgh because. Uh, they are still paying Ben, whether Ben's back or not. And we'll discuss that later too. Yeah. Look, <clears throat> this is my feeling on, on this whole scenario. No, that's my feeling. <laughs> Just no. Um, I look, I don't like Tom Brady. He's from Michigan. Ah, puke. I almost, oh, whoa, I did say whoa, the name. Whoa. I, He's I, from I, Michigan. Uh, uh, I owned at the beginning of the that university, that's that university up North. Yeah, he's, he's from that up North place. Uh, so that immediately gives him a strike. And you know what? Just screw him. I don't want him in Pittsburgh, nor do I, I, I care whether uh, you know certain, uh, I guess, uh, members of the press think that if he did come to Pittsburgh, we'd all be happy. No, I would not be happy. I would not be joyous. I don't want him anywhere near the black and gold. Um, but he's gonna, but, but he can bring you a Super Bowl, Brian. No, no, he can't. No, he can't. I don't <laughs> care. He can't. Um, he's lived in a system that has been t- tailored to him for over 20 years or whatever, however the hell long he's been playing since uh, Methuselah. He's, I, I, don't, I think he was playing before I was born. That'll tell you something. Anyway, <laughs> um, he's, he's, been, he's been in that system forever. Uh, the likelihood that he even leaves is, is slim in my opinion, but I, I relish the idea of him going somewhere else like the Dolphins or something along those lines. That would make me thrilled. Uh, but not Pittsburgh. And not only is it just not going to happen uh, for the very logical reasons that you stated in that they have no money to pay him. (laughs) Um, And even in the circumstance where Ben would retire and all of a sudden they'd have some extra cap money. No, that's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And, and, and (laughs) I, I, you, the first time I read it, I, I had to, I had to see if it was a joke, and then I read it again, and I just decided, you know what? I think today's a good day to stay out of the news uh, cycle. You know, Brett Favre only played until he was 41. That was his last year in the league with the Vikings. He played three seasons after he left the Packers. Uh, He played for the Jets, uh, and then two seasons uh, with the Minnesota Vikings, one of which, you know, they got to the NFC title game and whatnot, and then the other one was, meh, he went 5-8 and as a starter. Tom Brady's going to be 43 this upcoming August. He's 42 currently. You know, he's going to be like a one-year type deal thing with New England. And it's going to be interesting. You know, a lot of people are talking about New England and now all of their quarterback stuff because, you know, they had Jimmy Garoppolo. They had um, Jacoby Brissett. And, you know, go back and look at Garoppolo's stats. And he really only started like four games or something in in Tom Brady's uh, stead. And, you know, he's doing decent, but at first, man, he had a rocky preseason and start to the season this year, too, with the 49ers, you know what I mean? And he's been hurt and things of that nature, and landed like one of the biggest contracts, you know, period. And then you had uh, Jacoby Brissett was shipped off to the Colts, and now they're not sure that he's the answer, even though they felt comfortable with him, with Andrew Luck stepping aside, and probably as a backup in that. And I think that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing, like, a lot of people panic about the Steelers and having backup plans. And it's like, did you really think that what they had in place wasn't bad? And going forward, do you think it could be any worse? And, you know, I, I look at I look at somebody like New England and what, Brian Hoyer's the guy there? And it's like, you know, what are they going to roll with? You know what I mean? It's not like all of these teams have, like, all-star players that are going to just step in. The Saints had an extraordinary set of circumstances that afforded them to be able to have Teddy Bridgewater there. They also have a lot of younger and cheaper guys, like, on contract. They just had to pay Michael Thomas. You know what I mean? Uh, Elvin Kamara will be coming up, and they have several others that are in there on the defensive side of the ball, particularly that second secondary that are you know guys that are still playing on rookie contracts and that allows you to be able to what sink the money into the quarterback position it's overwhelmingly eating up everything and people are always asking me about Ben's contract and stuff and I'm like look around the league they wanted to get ahead of this because it's going to get worse it's not going to get any better when you're talking about guys like Matt Ryan and Matt Stafford and there's probably another Matt out there that's making like you know 30 million a year Kirk Cousins set this I, we got to backtrack on Kirk Cousins now um you know we should talk about the playoffs and what happened this weekend real quick uh you know hey 
The guy had ice in his veins. They got there. That $96 million, I was making fun of him for only scoring 10 points or 6 points or whatever like the Steelers were doing. And I'm like, hey, that's what you spent $96 million on. But, hey, they got in the playoffs. They got a victory um, by whatever means. You know, I'm, I'm supposed the uh, Saints fans' tears are salty too. But I, I, I was going to say this, Brian, I, I think we know the refs stink. They didn't even look at that uh, Kyle Rudolph touchdown where he – like just jammed his forearm, full arm extension into the guy's like face mask. And, you know, if you're going to allow things to go, I get it. I-, I would rather allow those things to go, but those are the kind of calls that they've flagged like all season or, or, you know, they've overturned things. And I just had this gut feeling as I'm watching the game, that game between the Saints and Vikings go to overtime. And we've talked about officiating and everything. We've talked about this ability to challenge pass interference, whether it's offensive or defensive, whether it, it was called or not. It, it all stemmed going back from the Saints kind of getting robbed, what, against the Vikings too, right? <laughs> And, Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, uh, I had a feeling because the Saints were so like proactive in getting this. I don't think the referees liked it. And uh, Neil Coolong, I, I may have mentioned this the last time that Neil put out something where he was talking about the brotherhood of officials. Really, you know, they really stick to two things: it's the spot of the ball and uh, the pass interference calls, as far as their judgment calls and keeping it close to their vest. And as soon as that occurred, I'm just like. There's no way Al Riveron saying he's up in his like ivory tower and he's saying screw you you guys uh, gave us all this grief by having this rule put in and here I am with Saints fans complaining still going I'm still going back to Joe Hayden getting called for pass interference where they benefited and basically knocked the Steelers out of the playoffs in 2018 because of that crap call with Alvin Kamara and Joe Hayden pass interference that. Geez, oh man, it makes you wish you could have challenged that back then. But uh, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of a the. I thought the referees were going to kind of put it to them when it came down to the judgment call. Maybe based on that, we always hear that when it comes to the Roonies or the Steelers, like abstain or they're like the one. They're the one owner's vote that doesn't go along with the flow with everyone else. You know what I mean? And I kind yeah. of felt. I kind of felt that's where that was going to be. And I know I kind of got off uh, on the quarterback thing here, but. Uh, the reason I was bringing that up was not only Kirk Cousins making all that money, and the Vikings had like three quarterbacks at once there. That what it was Bridgewater, it was um, oh who who's my other guy that uh, was always getting hurt? That was a number one pick. Um, Sam, Sam, Sam. Why can't I think of his name? Uh, with the Rams, he was with the Rams. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking. And Bradford, Bradford. Yeah, they had Bradford, and uh, I'm trying to think of the oh, and uh, and then. Um, What's his name? That's with the was with the Redskins this year too. Uh, Case Keenum, and all of that, and how that was working. And they went and they they scrapped the whole thing and went and got another quarterback. Well, all those contracts were expiring. They were able to move on. The, that's not something that the Steelers are going to be able to do. So you can't look at the Vikings and say, "Oh, I'm going to do that." Now you got to look at the Saints. What do they do? Is Drew Brees back? The quarterback position is so important in this league, and you see it. Uh, Tom Brady wasn't able to get the get the deal done. Uh, Josh Allen faltered in the second half. Well, Deshaun Watson, who had his ter- his worst first half, I think, as a pro, the Texans end up coming back. Uh, what's my other game I'm missing? The other NFC game, oh, Russell Wilson, uh, Dangerous, my favorite player. They they end up pulling out that game on the road, too. And you see what happens when the Eagles, they have Carson Wentz go down, who they, they bet the farm on that guy in order to get him. And, yeah, he's had some great regular seasons, and he's put together some impressive stats. But when it comes down to it, They've had to rely on uh, a backup in all all this time. It was either Nick Foles, who, yeah, I wouldn't want him in a black and gold jersey either. I wouldn't trust him being a starter, would you? I, I wouldn't. And Josh yeah. McCown, another guy, uh, uh, hate to call him an old man, but he's play, he's been in the league probably like 20 years and played for 17 different teams, which I could actually find that out, by the way. <laughs> I, I'm very facetious, and I know I'm getting long-winded here, but the, the point of this being, other than we got most of our picks right, or at least the games went the way we thought, you look at all these games in the quarterback play, and it's like, what else do you want the Steelers, Kevin Colbert, the Roonies, Mike Tomlin, and everyone to do? It's not like quarterbacks just grow on trees. This is a very, like... A long time subject and topic here on this show, but especially with me, you, and the professor. Like, what do fans expect? Uh, I mean, we're going to get into this with the other quarterbacks, but it's just, uh, I think they expect, they have unrealistic expectations. Well, yeah, of course. Um, that's why you're fans, right? Fanatics, they, they, we're always unreasonable. I mean, you know, 
Uh, some are more unreasonable than others, but you know we're we're an unreasonable group. Uh, we expect to win the Super Bowl every year, and when we don't, you know, we all cry. Uh, even teams <laughs> that have never been to the Super Bowl expect to win the Super Bowl every year. Um, you know, I, look, I, I Cleveland. I'm, I'm yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland. Much um, okay, but you know, I I am. I actually could like I think I said this. I couldn't remember whether I picked the Bills or the Texans, and that game went pretty much the way I expected in the sense that it was very close. Could have gone either way. Uh, there's a there's a ref call that didn't get made there towards the end where there there could have been a roughing the passer thrown uh, against Houston that might have t- allowed oh, the yeah. Bills to tie that game up. Um, you know, you talk about the the PI non call, the offensive PI non call that any human being looking at in review would have said that is clearly offensive pass interference. It's full extension. He pushed him away so that he could clear space. It's the literal definition of it's, offensive it's, it's, pass it's Mike, interference. It's the Michael Irvin rule. Yeah, you can't do that, and to not review it. Um, look, if I'm a Saints fan, I, I may be storming New York, finding Al Riveron and uh, stringing him up by his gonads. Uh, you know, because it's two years in a wait, row. You don't need. I don't think you needed to be a Saints fan to do that. Well, that's true. Most most of us would do that just for the pure fun and joy of it. But uh, at this point, Saints fans might seriously be considering it. Um, you know, that's as I said, that's two years in a row that their Super Bowl dreams have been essentially trashed because of the fact that hashtag the refs stink. Um, and, and that's the, the, to me, that's one of the biggest problems that simply continues to exist in this league is that they will, they are going to lose fans because the refs are just inadequate uh, to doing their job, even at a marginal level for the most part. I think they're also going to lose fans because they they live in a draconian era when it comes to broadcasting and TV and stuff, too. I was just reading something this morning, uh, and this is kind of on a whole separate topic we could get into, but the NFL is now going to target VPN users. So that would be anybody who uses a service to make it appear that you're somewhere else. And why would somebody do that? Oh, I don't know. They live, let's say, in uh, you know California and are a Steelers fan and want to watch the Steelers games. So they'll make it look like they're in Pittsburgh in order to get whatever services that there are available and would work to work there or get around the blackout if you're in Pittsburgh and then, you know, you don't have any other way to do it but it's just it's ridiculous to me to think you know the the nfl just they just keep finding different ways to shoot themselves in the foot they have this like this the hottest thing i just keep thinking about this new cba that's going to be coming up how they have all these thursday night games and then they have all these different specials and uh, you know it's just there's so much money at stake and it's like they're going to like throw it all out the window <laughs> if they don't clean up some of these things. I mean, we talked about officiating can't get any better unless, you know, they got to do some other things and that's a whole other topic too. Uh, they just refuse to do certain things when it comes to those avenues and you're just going to tee off more and more fans and, and you know, Steelers fans have probably forgotten some of the things that have happened over this past season because it's a very long season and people have a very short memory you go into you know the training camp they have uh, four quarterbacks and it's you know Ben Roethlisberger Mason Rudolph Josh Dobbs and then they pick up this Devlin Hodges kid and it's like okay they originally had um um uh, Brogan Roback, I couldn't remember his name. That was the guy that was like the hard knocks guy uh, with the Browns the year before. And he yeah. was like their fourth quarterback or whatever. He may even, uh, I don't know if he got any playing time or not with them. But uh, anyways, uh, you know, it was like, oh, that guy's got an arm or whatever. And then they have this rookie uh, camp and they need to bring in a body in order to throw the ball around. And Hodges, they're like, whoa, this guy. Okay. They bumped uh, Brogan Road back off. We bring Hodges to the camp. A lot of people got excited about him, a lot of the beat writers and stuff. And you got to understand when you go to camp, it's like a lot of the guys who necessarily wouldn't uh, get, get time in the regular season are getting time there. So Ben might throw. He, he's usually involved early in camp. Then he's going to get like a rest day or maybe like let's say they run like a certain drill. And he's going to operate it sometimes maybe with the backup. Uh, Maybe they go three deep. Maybe the fourth guy only gets like a rep or two. Or maybe sometimes Ben only gets a rep or two and they really focus on giving the backup guys, uh, the younger guys that they're trying to develop some of the snaps there. And and then Ben might take a complete day off. You know, he's, you know, 
you know, well, they're in shorts anyways, but you get my point. Maybe he's, I do. Maybe he's wearing the little bucket hat that protects him from the sun and things of that nature. And, you know, he's been playing forever. He, you know, what do you need to see from Ben Roethlisberger? You know what I mean? You don't need to see anything. So you need to see everything from Mason Rudolph and, and Josh Dobbs. And for all intents and purposes, the reason, you know, Dobbs, we, we speculated on this. What if he would have got a chance to play? Would it have been any different? Well, no. The reason he was let go, he was traded. They got something for him, which was great. It was almost like robbery, you know what I mean? And it's not like the Jaguars had, like, this great quarterback situation. Foles got hurt, and they bring in Gardner Minshew, and uh, Dobbs never really saw the field. They brought Foles back, and then Foles was back out, and Minshew was in. You know what I mean? So it's not like Dobbs lit the world on fire down there. I think he's a very smart uh, quarterback with a lot of good leadership skills, and you know they everybody has different talents that that suit them, and you got to have that offense work tailored to that quarterback. Go back to Tommy Maddox versus Ben Roethlisberger, and how it wasn't the same once Tommy tried to come back in, or even Cordell Stewart when they you know look at all of the uh, how erratic that was. What Kent Graham and Cordell Stewart, and you can go back to days in the past with Mike Tomzak and Jim Miller and all those guys too. You know, it was very erratic quarterback play, and that's what you're seeing again. And we were talking about entitled fans and stuff, and they don't understand the Steelers didn't make the playoffs. Oh, they were only eight and eight. Fire this with Mike Tomlin. Fire all these people. Go sign a backup quarterback. And it's like they already had this in place in camp. And Hodges didn't make the team. We even did a show, I think, in the summer where we said they had a good quarterback problem. We felt everybody was good. They were adequate. If Ben you know, was missing a game or two, one of these guys could step in. Now, I know you haven't been the Mason Rudolph fan, so to speak, uh, and you don't feel that he's a franchise quarterback. And I, I feel that's fair, but I think when we define that as franchise quarterback, we're talking like upper echelon guys, right? We're talking Ben, we're talking Brady, Breeze, oh, Philip yeah. Rivers. I, I could totally understand that. I could see Mason Rudolph being a Andy Dalton. As much as we rag on him, maybe better. <laughs> um, but adequate enough, you know what I mean? Maybe get your team into playoff contention, but – might make a mistake here or there, and it all depends. We don't know. We haven't seen everything. Only time will tell on some of this stuff. But going out there and, and you know, everybody wants to start talking draft. Everybody wants to start talking free agency. And, I mean, you're kicking that can so far down the road. We don't have free agency until March. We don't have the draft until close to May. And, you know, and I don't think the Steelers have a huge quarterback need. They have five guys on the roster right now. Now, We'll talk about Ben, I think, at the very end, uh, just to kind of keep everyone with us. <laughs> yeah. You know, because we can knock that one out right away. But they have Mason Rudolph, Duck Hodges, Paxton Lynch, who people were begging to have come in. And then uh, they signed JT Barrett to a, a futures reserve contract type thing, too, which I have some, I, I think I, ha I know why that might be, too, but we'll get to that. And people, yeah, people begging for Paxton Lynch, people begging for a veteran quarterback, people begging for a rookie. Look, folks, if you bring in a rookie, not only are you using, you don't have a first round draft pick. Uh, supposedly they'll have a second and two threes. That's what you're, you're getting into the territory of where you brought Mason Rudolph in or where you brought Josh Dobbs in. You're going to, you're, if, if you don't want to repeat the same thing, that's probably going to be repeating the same thing. And who's to say that, that guy's any better? They may be worse. You never know, said, said unnamed player. You already said Joe Burrow. There's no way. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch him with a 40-foot stick, right? And that's if he was even available. I don't think he's going to get out of like the top five or whatever else. You know, I, I don't see Joe Burrow, even if he were available, be you know falling out of the top one, let alone the top five or top ten or anywhere where the Steelers. You know what it would take the Steelers to move up for a guy like that. So a lot of people are speculating. Oh, here here's a bunch of day two people uh, that they could go get, and it's like, well, that's what Mason Rudolph became. I mean, he was thought of as maybe being a first round guy or or a day one guy. Uh, they had five other guys go in that first round. So, I mean, I don't get it. It's like, do you really want somebody like Jalen Hurts? Do you think Tua's going to be there? And everybody that's all of a sudden excited about the next shiny toy, they still forget that Ben's sitting there, too. And then now you have some seasoned quarterbacks, too, that have gotten some uh, gotten some valuable playing time this season. Yeah, look, I, I, I know I'm on record as saying this more than once. 
if the Steelers draft a quarterback at any point in the upcoming draft, I'm driving to Pittsburgh to smack both Mike Tomlin and Kelvin Colbert in the face because it's stupid. Um, they've already got more than enough quarterbacks on the roster, that, and and they still have a Hall of Fame quarterback on the roster who is, as you said, not going anywhere. Um, you know, I, I get. Uh, you know, Mike Tomlin mentioned this in his in his last press conference um, that you know we're going to get an update on Ben sometime in February. Uh, and, but there's no reason to think that things aren't going to be fine. Uh, and until that changes, then, the, then, you know, you don't have, you really don't have a reason to draft a quarterback because first off, any quarterback they draft in, in the second or lower rounds, and they have much greater needs than a second round quarterback. If there's even anybody worthy of a second round pick there, um, you know, is is going to be, as you said, minimally no better than Mason Rudolph and and possibly no better than any of the people that are currently on the roster. Um, you know, it, it's it's it, it would be wasteful and and they're not that uh, they don't they don't operate that way. They know that they've got the quarterbacks they're going to operate with already in place, um, even at value, unless they draft somebody thinking they can convert him into something else. Um, you know, that that has been a, a trend over the past few years of taking quarterbacks and then making them tight ends or making them uh, receivers or, or, or whatnot. They f- think there's a guy that they can mold. They might pick somebody very late in the draft. Uh, you're talking rounds five or lower. Um, but, you know, they're not going to there's just and, and people need to stop. You've got Ben. <laughs> well, and see, that's the thing. They, they're not realizing they have Ben, or they're thinking Ben doesn't return, or Ben returns and he's not the same player. And I've seen a lot of criticism because it's like everybody all of a sudden is like, go get a veteran quarterback. Uh, go get, um, you know, this is aside from the draft one, okay? Let me go back and let me finish my thoughts on the draft thing. I'm like, you're saying, oh, they don't need to do, they don't need to draft some, somebody that's not a priority. And people are thinking that just because they're looking at this year and thinking, oh, we need a quarterback. The quarterback sucked. Well, there were a lot of other things that weren't good either that contributed to some of that, including inexperience. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, I'm not going to write off anybody. I'm not even going to write off Hodges, to be completely honest. I mean, uh, we know basically where they kind of fit, but it's a it's a learning process in your building. Okay, you're building on it, you're molding it. It's like a sculpture. You go draft somebody, you got to start over. You just you know throw that in the trash, and we're starting from scratch, a fresh canvas, so to speak. Just keep working on what you got, work what you're working on for now, and see how it rides out. Ben's under contract through 2021. And I mentioned that they were getting out in front of things because, you know, he had a uh, dead cap of uh, $43.7 million this year. <laughs> and yeah. uh, where'd the AB money go? Oh, man, is this guy is holding this team hostage. No, not really. He's not holding them hostage because you know what's going to happen this year. If they need to go find money to sign D- Bud Dupree, uh, they start to do these funny things with the cap. And Ben can make, like, a base salary that's, like, $700,000 or something stupid. And, and then they kick this money and float it around and do all these cap tricks because as you know our buddy Eric says the cap's a myth uh, and to some degree maybe it is and I understand he has a huge uh, cap hit but you go even to 2021 you know where you know Ben's cap hit uh, I guess it was uh, this season geez it's it's hard to say like where all of this is because there's roster bonuses there was yearly cash of 45 million <laughs> it's it's crazy and I don't I don't propose that I know everything about the cap but you, like I said, you look at where things are going with like a Matt Stafford and things like that. They're paying Ben now while they had some of the money on the books to be able to pay and do some of this stuff this year and then move it out. It was a two-year, $68 million contract, uh, basically an extension. And that's what they'll end up doing. They'll either extend Ben or they'll see where it's at. But, I mean, 2021, we're already talking about Mason Rudolph's going to be up for, you know, past his rookie deal. So you got several years uh, of figuring this thing out. Now – we're speculating where the Steelers or how this is going to play out. We're speculating that Ben Roethlisberger is going to come back. Now, what might that look like? What if he's not the same Ben? Well, you have 2020 and 2021 where you're paying them, and obviously they, you know, there's a potential out if they didn't want to roll with Big Ben in 2021. So let's say his arm is a complete uh, wet noodle in 2020. You're gonna kind of quickly find out too. Like if he if he can't play, 
you're going to have more of the same of last season. Now you know who Mason Rudolph is, and if he stays healthy, you're really going to know where he is. We won't be talking about ceilings or floors. You're going to know what kind of player he is, uh, so to speak. And hopefully you don't have to find out who the next guy is, whether that be Duck Hodges or whoever. Now, if Rudolph isn't the guy and Ben isn't the guy, then you could start looking in 2021. If Ben is the guy through 2020, 2021, those next two years, that affords you the following year maybe to figure out what you're going to do. Are you going to extend Mason Rudolph to a one- or two-year deal, maybe keep him, stash him on the bench? Will some other team come hunting for him just because he has some starting experience in the NFL? I mean, anything there is possible, uh, but you know the Steelers aren't in a major rush, and if they completely flat-out suck, Brian, guess what? This is the big one here. Uh, they'll have a high draft pick in 21 or 22, that maybe they do use on a quarterback and get the first-round guy that everybody all of a sudden wants now that would be sitting on the bench for two, three years and it just maybe cause like the Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre controversy, and maybe he's no good anyways. Yeah, you, look, it's it's been well proven that just because you get a top draft pick uh, quarterback doesn't mean that they're going to be any good. Um, you know, Some of these guys come in and they are good, and some of them come in and they are not. Uh, but you know, so it's hit or miss, and, and the best thing you can do is hope you've done your due diligence and hope the guy pans out, but it's not time for that yet. Not only is it not time, they don't have the ammunition to do it. Um, you know, and, and I think you, you gave the best example. Let's say that Ben comes back next year and has a noodle arm, um, which I don't think there's, there's really justification for, for having that level of paranoia yet, but let's say that happens and, and he's not able uh, to perform at the at the level that we're used to. Um, you're right. You got Mason Rudolph, who now has a year of of at least partial starting under his belt. Um, you know, he's more familiar with the offense, and you're going to get your your opportunity to see whether he is in fact going to be the guy for the for the time being. Um, and you know, while I already have my opinion. I would be happy to reassess it later after more, uh, you know, data is input. Um, you know, and I, I think it's fair to say that if that does occur, fine. Uh, you know, you you then get loaded up for when you will again have a first round draft pick in 2021. And if Mason's not the guy and they stink up the joint, um, and you have a season akin to this one or worse you may be able to go after that quarterback in 2021. Um, and, and at least you, you'll know where you stand. Uh, just the idea of drafting a quarterback right now or even worrying about drafting a quarterback or trying to sign a, vet, uh, a veteran quarterback uh, that is, is somewhere out there and please, please, <laughs> please do not bring up the CK name. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, wasn't even th- I wasn't even thinking so, that. Just don't. Uh, but, you know, it, it's – look, they are set at quarterback right now. They know who they have, and they know what they're going to have, and it's almost certainly not going to change between now and training camp, uh, barring something unforeseen. Uh, I just I just don't buy into that. And the, and the vets who are going to come out of teams, guys like Andy Dalton, a, a guy like Brady, you're not going to get them to come here and sit. <laughs> well, thank you, Ben. That's what I was going to get to with um, even the Teddy Bridgewater thing. I don't think he necessarily wants to sit, but he's in a position in New Orleans where you got um, – man, I keep looking this up too because Drew Brees just had a birthday uh, in January here. Uh, he's 40 years old now. Uh, he's going to be 41 in a week. Okay, how many more days does he have? I mean, they're probably looking at Bridgewater and trying to pay him a fair uh, veteran backup contract and seeing how he played and, and worked with that team and being a, a solid QB. Um, you know, that, that's the kind of thing there, but it, he's looking to be the heir apparent. You know what I mean? He's just got to wait maybe a season and, and maybe Brees steps aside. Who knows? You know what I mean? Or maybe they pull the trigger and say, well, eh, Drew, you know what? We're done. We're moving on, which teams have done. They've done that to Peyton Manning. They've done it to uh, Brett Favre. They've done it to many other guys in the past too. What? Joe Namath, Joe Montana. Uh, who else am I missing that's played in a different uniform for a season or two? Uh, you know, those type of things occur because it's a business. Uh, you got to 
and you're trying to, you know, I don't know, future proof your team in a, in a way, I guess. He's yeah. not he's not going to come to a team that has a guy that's under contract for another 2 years and m- maybe beyond that's younger. How many more years is Teddy Bridgewater thinking he may have around in the league? I mean, he's not old. But he's certainly been around what, like, maybe, man, he's already been around maybe like his seventh season. I'm pulling this up right now. He got drafted in 2014, so um, four, four years with the Vikings, um, and then uh, two years with the Saints. So six years. It'll be his seventh year. He's uh, 27 as of November 10th. So a 27 year old guy is thinking, you know, eventually he's going to get his his start here. Uh, you look at guys like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Or um, even Josh McCown, and you want to re-sign Bud Dupree, right? And you know the Steelers don't have like all of this cash just laying around. Um, two years, eleven million dollars to sit on the bench. What was that Chase Daniel contract for? However bad, and he didn't end up playing too. Remember, it was like uh, with the Eagles, like three mil, like twenty-one or three years, uh, twenty-one million dollars or something a few years ago. Uh, these are yeah. the type of contracts that are floating around for some of these guys. I mean, unless they're at the very tail end of you know not playing, like maybe you, if you're New England, you might be able to get like a, a Hoyer. I'm trying to get Hoyers up here too. Uh, Josh McCown was one year, two million. He was he was pulled basically out of retirement. Uh, let's see who else is here. I want to say Bridgewater was in the six million range. Let's see, Hoyer was three years, twelve million. I mean, that's twelve million. You're still you're you're paying uh, you know four or five million, six million a year for a backup quarterback. And the reason some of these teams are doing are doing this or able to do this, I'm sorry, Hoyer's the backup in, with the Colts. Who the heck's the backup for the Patriots? Um, I, I don't even know who the heck it is right now. <laughs> it's yeah. you know it's like that's where that's where you're at um, with these backups. It's like they're doing that with Hoyer because maybe Brissett isn't making as much money. For example, it's you know and they had that because Brissett was too was under a cheap kind of contract two year. Well, he was two years uh, thirty mil. Just recent, that was uh, just going in now that they did this because uh, Andrew Luck was stepping away, and some of that was void and null and void too. So you got a lot of different money. I- I'm talking myself in circles, but I think the point I'm trying to make is is that you don't have the money to invest in, in a major veteran backup quarterback. And when you've had those major veteran co- backup quarterbacks, I mean, like I've proven, Charlie Batch's numbers were right on par with Mason Rudolph's. They're almost identical. He he was like you know a 500 quarterback as far as a record. 12 and 12 TDs interceptions. He didn't light up the scoreboard. You know what I mean? And he's a guy who took some team friendly deals to stick around. They tried to get rid of him multiple times, too. Byron Lefwich was there. Uh, Bruce Gradkowski. I mean, you saw the way it worked with some of those guys. You're, you're in the same 500 area. Guess what the Steelers did this year? Eight and eight. I mean, that's where you're getting at, even if you have like a veteran guy and you're spending more money on them where. You know, you got a lot of things looming. I know the cap is a lot of is going to be a, a big problem this season. Then you look beyond it, and it's because of some of the free agent contracts coming up beyond that too that they'll have to address. But there's a lot of money that'll be made available, as well as we know a new CBA is going to be around the corner and more money made available. So I think the Steelers are really they're they're spending right up to it, and they have to in order to retain some of their homegrown players. T.J. Watt's going to be up, for example, uh, in another year or so, and and some guys like that. So you know it's you got to have money to be able to spend in other positions. You can't just afford to pay millions of dollars to a guy that supposedly will ride the bench just because it makes you feel better in case your guy that you're paying 30 some million dollars and is a future Hall of Famer doesn't end up playing. It doesn't work like that. And I think that's pretty much the path of where we're going here with the Steelers is uh, you got some guys who just got some NFL experience in Rudolph and Hodges. I think those will be the two guys. And a lot of people got excited. Paxton Lynch was brought in because he had some NFL experience and they were in dire straits because Rudolph was out and now you only have Hodges. Now where do you go? You got to have a guy that's at least thrown the ball around the field a little bit who Who's available that's out there? Well, it's slim pickings, especially when you're talking about what the month of December. And I know that's I know it's somebody they probably scouted and looked at, and he has the intangibles, and he's tall and big, and you know he could see over the offensive line and things of that nature. But he didn't necessarily have a good go of it with all these other teams that he was with. He signed a two year deal. We'll see if he ends up sticking around. Uh, my uh, my hunches right now, when you're looking at the full QB picture, Brian. 
a lot of people made a big to-do about JT Barrett. I think it's because JT Barrett will be eligible to throw in rookie camp. You never know who else may be invited or come out of that because there's been casualties each year. They had, what, it was like the one guy from Clemson, uh, Deshaun Watson's backup that went into camp and then didn't come back out of it, and they brought in somebody else. So they're going to they're gonna look and they're going to bring some guys that could at least – at least run, uh, I think it was Bart Houston, and then there was somebody else too. Um, th- these guys got to be able to run some semblance of offense in preseason to give other guys a good look too. And I think that's where JT Barrett comes in uh, because I don't think Paxton Lynch, I mean, all these guys, Hodges might be available just because he was a rookie, uh, an undrafted rookie. Uh, you need a couple guys to throw the ball around. I don't think Lynch could throw the ball around. I don't think he's eligible to be participating in a rookie camp. He's not like a first or second year player anymore. Certainly Rudolph won't be anymore. He'll be a third year player. Obviously Ben <laughs> isn't anywhere near that. So you need some guys to be able to run some of the drills and stuff just for the sake of practice too. Absolutely. Uh, and And look, you know, I, I I just keep coming back to the same point. Um, you know, you have Ben Roethlisberger. He will be coming back. Uh, the the rumors that he, maybe he was thinking about not coming back and blah blah blah. That's just clickbait crap that people are putting out there. Uh, whoever it may be, it, it, it's you know I, I hate using the term fake news, but it's fake news. It's 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 something you got to be wary of anytime you're you're dealing with internet uh, social media stuff. People can just say stuff. You know, we could too. We, at least we, we could. We try and stay grounded. <laughs> yes, we try not to just say stuff that uh, you know would elicit a response unless there's some validity to it. Um, and I don't think there's any validity to that. I think that's just pure speculation. And Ben pretty much put it to rest by saying that's BS. Um, you know, he's going to come back, and and you're going to have the guy who's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer be the quarterback next season. Um, they have much bigger concerns, which I'm sure we'll talk about ad nauseum up until the draft, that they need to address and that they need to handle. And so the idea that a quarterback needs to be a target in the upcoming draft or even needs to be a target in free agency is, uh, to, to a great extent, just silly, ludicrous, and, and nonsensical. It really is, and I know some people are, you know, they want to win now. They want to win the Super Bowl. They won't be happy if next year, you know, Tomlin and the Steelers miss the playoffs or they have a losing record because they didn't make some other kind of plans for Ben Roethlisberger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squash that right now. Mark it on the calendar. It's January 7th, 2020. You got to put the twenty in the twenty because uh, there's a check scam thing that people are worried about too. Uh, <laughs> so they could just write oh. in twenty eighteen, I guess, if you just put a twenty and abbreviate it. But anyway, uh, January seventh, twenty twenty. They were not expecting any of this to happen with Ben. <laughs> not this season, not into the future. So these are unforeseen plans. This is much like trying to patch the defense uh, when you know Aaron Smith got hurt. Lamar Woodley didn't end up uh, working up to the contract that he had. Troy Polamalu you know, uh, started to get dinged up and things of that nature. It's all the same stuff. You're, it's your best laid plans. You, you cannot – see the future. You cannot predict the future. The best you can do is make an educated guess on as to how to proceed. And with the way the Steelers have done this over, geez, decades now, I'm going to, I'm going to trust that they know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could not agree with your statement more than I do. Yeah. The reason to say they know what they're doing. They know what's going on. They understand the position that they are currently in. And you know they're going to they're going to act accordingly. It's just to to float the, this uh, this idea out there. I get it, like you said. Um, we're and we have uh, we have panicky fans, uh, just like every fan base does, who who look at everything and then uh, see see you know oh well if we had that guy, um, if we had that guy. I mean you know look what what's all the all the Titan stuff that's been coming out as well. Oh, let's get Mariota. Oh, let's get uh, that's the one I forgot. Uh, Ryan Tannehill because that uh, all that go away. <laughs> well, Just you think go they're, away they're not going to let Tannehill leave the building. Are you kidding me? And yeah, Mariota was the next best thing since sliced bread when he came out of the draft, as was Jameis Winston. And it's like, you, you know, the grass isn't always greener. And even for the people who, 
you always get the Coward and Tomlin comments in the back and forth. They're both great coaches, okay? They each had their own strengths and their own weaknesses, either into their own coaching game and or uh, their players. And everybody's like, well, Coward didn't have the coach and Co- or Coward didn't have the quarterback. Well, you know, that's very true. Uh, and, and Tomlin did for, you know, his whole career pretty much now. But it, would it be so bad – if you had to roll with he who shall not be named, Mike Tom Zach, he's not who you should not be named. The other one rhymes with O'Connell. Uh, Mike Tom Zach, Cordell Stewart, Tommy Maddox, and you're still putting up competitive records, winning division titles, making it to the AFC title game. You know, I know everybody wants the big one, but I mean, it's very rare. We talked about winning playoffs and everything like that. If that's what Mason Rudolph provides you, and you have this, you know, Kick ass defense, be playing behind them, and you happen to get somebody else. Maybe plug in there. Maybe maybe Connor stays healthy and he becomes like the next Bell or Bettis or something. You know what I mean? You end up getting something like that going. I mean, anything's possible. So it's not like you even need like somebody who's gonna you know dominate the world at the quarterback position, uh, <laughs> or or you need to reach for somebody who you think will. We'll see how this plays out. I think the status quo, just staying, uh, standing firm with who they have and what they have going forward, is that you just need to get rid of all the panic about whether or not Ben is going to return as Ben or whatever happens with Ben. Uh, if Ben is Ben, then you know this thing's going to run like it should run like a finely tuned machine. If Ben isn't Ben, like we said. We'll find out what Rudolph is. We may find out what Hodges is. And if they're not the answers, then, hey, maybe you have a team that ends up going, oh, I don't know, 6-10, and 10, and then they're able to go and draft their quarterback of the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is exactly how Ben Roethlisberger came to town. So, you know. Exactly. And, and you're lucky, and we're still lucky, and we're still fortunate that not only was Ben a uh, a, a solid first-round draft pick at quarterback because everyone talks about that class, Eli Manning, Philip Rivers, but they forget that J.P. Lossman went to the Bills in that uh, same draft, and the Bills have been scratching and clawing and biting for guys for years. What uh, he's one of them, you know. They went and drafted E.J. Manuel, who didn't end up working out either. They went with the they went the veteran route a lot of times. They had Ryan Fitzpatrick. They had Kyle Orton. Um, they also tried to make Nathan Peterman a quarterback, an NFL quarterback. Yeah. I mean, you know, and and that that might be part of the process. It might not be. It might not be all sunshine and uh, rainbows and everything. But you have to believe that the system that's in place, uh, the way the Steelers operate and have operated over the years, and the way Mike Tomlin has coached these teams, that they'll at least always be competitive, and that the quarterback position is not something to get in a tizzy over. I agree. <laughs> well, I don't know that there's much more to say. I mean, uh, that we're going to start repeating the same thing, so I don't necessarily want to do that. But uh, I'm sure I'll see something out on Facebook or Twitter or wherever else where somebody makes some real uh, boneheaded, hey, this guy might be available. Why don't we go get them? And it's just like, okay, just – Slow, slow your roll. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Brian, thanks for joining me once a day, once again today. And uh, you know, for your for our own sanity, maybe we should just stay away from the internet for a little while. Uh, at least until uh, you know th- this particular uh, form of lunacy has uh, evaporated. I don't think it's going to evaporate anytime soon either. Um, you know, this is going to be an ongoing until we get into. Like October, probably. I, I, I like. I, no, dead serious. You're going to go to camp. We don't know Ben's timeline if he's going to be throwing in camp. Imagine if camp breaks and he's not throwing yet. There's going to be panic. There's going to be paranoia. There's going to be mass hysteria. I'll, I don't need the Ghostbusters quote again, but <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, hope, like I said, hopefully, he's not hopefully gonna, we know in February a, a good a better timetable in February after whatever that update is. Yeah, I mean you got to um, assume he's coming to camp, but what if he what if he's not there right away or what, they're going to give him a day of rest and people are going to freak out about it even though he's gotten it for like 13 <laughs> 14 years. He's not going to play in the first two preseason games and everyone's going to freak out then too and Rudolph's going to throw a pick in one of those games. They play the Eagles or Panthers or somebody like that and it's going to be like, and you know he's going to be in there with some like guys that aren't going to be on the NFL team team come September and everybody's going to freak out about that too. And then all of a sudden you're going to get to week one and maybe, maybe the offense, maybe Ben only, you know, 
throws for 135 yards or something, a touchdown and a pick, and you know they, they either lose or they squeak by with just a field goal win. And you can see all the narratives already piling up. It's the same stuff, just to put a new year on it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it's just going to be the same thing until you know for sure, and you won't know for sure until they play next season. And they, and they play ample games because he was five games in a couple of years ago, threw five picks against the Jaguars, and everybody was writing him off then too. All true. All yep. true. All uh, the, just it's it's all true. That the Han Solo said that. All of it. Yes. All of it. It's all, <laughs> all true. All of it. Well, Brian, thanks for joining me once again. And folks, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. My name's Joe Kuzma. His name's Brian e. Roach. Until next time, we encourage everyone to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website www.steelcityunderground.com